people on the internet pretending to be someone else. This is Jose. As I understand, Jose has been Rosa. Yep. That's nothing new. But there is something that's happening more often, a disturbing trend involving fake profiles, and it's having deadly consequences. The language and, and the force behind the threats kept escalating. Those fake profiles with criminals on the keyboards, trying to get you to send them intimate photos and videos of yourself, and then threatening to send those images to everyone you know unless you pay up. These criminals are not just targeting adults. A teenager killed himself after falling victim to one of these lowlifes. And we will admit this next story is really tough. But tonight, the parents of that boy want you to know just how quickly this kind of thing can happen and the conversation that you should be having with your children. Our Joel Eisenbaum now with tonight's investigation. Happy birthday to he was on track. I mean it. Even when he was little, Evan McDaniel was engaged and loving and productive. He was just a happy kid. And at 14, now a young man, Evan was doing well in school. His parents saw no signs of trouble. And that's just how out of the realm of possibility it was that he did this. What Evan did is what teens do. He made a connection online with someone he thought was a pretty girl interested in him, someone who has since vaporized. Going back when you see the initial contact he had with whoever this person is, that was just 72 hours before his death? That was on January 3rd, and he died January 6th. Evan had made contact, it seems, not with a teenage girl at all but a criminal enterprise that the Harris County Sheriff's Office later determined to be based in the Philippines. The FBI recently said they estimate 500,000 predators online every single day. Of those 500,000 predators, each of them can have multiple accounts and they are targeting our children. In this case, it appears the end game was money, extortion. His parents say it started when Evan visited a website called Omegle, Omegle bills itself as a way to meet strangers and includes video chat. Whoever was on the other end of the line with Evan appears to have recorded compromising video of him. And when he didn't pay and stopped responding, they sent a screen grab to his sister and his cousin. The language and, and the force behind the threats kept escalating, but he was in bed. He wasn't allowed his phone. Evan's parents physically took Evan's phone from him every night. The next day, though, January 6th, he got it back, and the messages were waiting for him. Your family, they're ruined. Your life is ruined. This video is going to go viral. Yep. And you might as well kill yourself because yep. your life is over. Within a half hour of reading those messages, Evan did exactly that. A 14-year-old boy who ended his own life, never knowing who was threatening him. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. These are parents who took precautions, collected devices, and checked them often. But don't stop there, says Crime Stoppers of Houston's CEO. You've got to make sure to have this conversation. You are going to meet people you've never seen in real life who are going to tell you they're your age, they go to a similar school, they're in another state, another country, and they just want to be friends with you. Nine times out of ten, that's not real. And there's one other talking point. The McDaniels replay it in their heads. We never told him, if you do mess up and if something happens, come to us. That's an important one. Remind your kids there's no problem too big. You can't work out together. Do it before it's too late. There's little hope of finding the criminals here. They're most likely on foreign soil. For parents and grandparents on click2houston.com slash investigates, we've got some more ideas of what you can do short of cutting off your kids completely from the Internet. Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC, 2 News. Such